guys, so I want to talk to you today and kind of show you how I do feathers on a bird. This is not how I would paint feathers if I was working on like a single feather to show it really big on a page. This is how I do feathers when I'm actually painting with a bird. I'm pulling out a number two round and a number six round here. And um, I can't show the painting and my paints in one shot here so I'll just have to tell you kind of the colors I'm using but the colors are kind of irrelevant. I'm going to be using a good bit of neutral tint and sepia for these because I want kind of a warm color of dark. I want it to be like a black but a warm black if that makes sense. I don't want it to look like a blue black so I'm kind of mixing a color together until I just get a really dark color that has a warm tone to it since pelicans to me have that kind of a uh, brown black. So when I go to paint the feather, the feathers always have a shadow from the feather that's above it. Feathers are kind of like stacked on top of each other, if that makes sense. So the, the part that's going under the feather on top of it is going to be darker than the feather is going to be on the edge. So I lay down the color pretty dark in some areas because I want it to uh, have that really dark value. But then I'm going to pull the value out by just using water to spread the color that I've laid down. So after I've taken a little time here to put in the darkest value, you also have to remember that there's a center spine in the feather and sometimes that shows and sometimes it doesn't show. Sometimes there's a light section there around the center spine. Sometimes it's darker there. You really just have to pay attention to the picture and see what it is that, that you're seeing in the picture. I'm laying in that darker value. Here's the picture I'm using. This is a picture from Pixabay, which is a site that gives pictures that are free for artists to use as reference photos if you're not familiar with it. Obviously I changed the entire background, but this is basically what I'm pulling my inspiration for for this pelican. Now, you can see I'm getting a smaller, smaller brush. This is a zero round because I just didn't, I needed to really get in there into some tiny little spaces uh, and I didn't have enough of a fine tip to really get in there. I'm cleaning off my brush so that I have basically just water and now I'm going to pull some of that color farther into the the feather because I want to create that gradient of color so again I'm I'm cleaning off my brush I'm just getting some water and I'm using just water to spread the color that I already laid down and that will give me a lighter color on this part of the feather and then I'm going to go back and make sure that that is smooth I don't want it to be like oh it's dark here but it's really light over here I want to kind of work that color a little bit and help it move so that I have a nice smooth gradient there you can see I've left a little white line along the spine where this feather is and then there's a white area at the top the white area at the top is like a white marking on the bird but the spine I will go back after that's dry with just a wet brush and I will go over it and that will um, it'll make it a lighter gray but not so stark white okay now I'm skipping a feather and I'm going to the one after it and I'm doing that because I don't want to touch the wet the feather that's still wet here I want to go to one that is dry so I'm going to work in this dry area and again I'm 
just just look at the feather and see you know where in the feather is the value dark where in the feather is the value light and and pull it from that it's it's it looks complicated when you see all of these feathers on the bird but it's not really it's just a little bit time consuming and tedious to go through and paint each feather and I don't always paint each feather but on these large flight feathers I wanted to see the definition of the feathers and so I really spent some time putting in all of that detail to get the feather to show up so I'm going to speed up a little bit of this so that you see me working a little more quickly Now, as I finish up these, this area with the darker flight feathers, I want to start to add a little bit of texture to the feathers because very rarely are feathers just perfectly, uh, you know, the feathers have all these little bits that are stuck together. They're almost Velcroed together. And most of the time, they've started to kind of break apart. You've got areas where there's a little bit of a heavier amount of those or a lighter amount. And so I start to put in some texture lines here and they're just going to be kind of like, instead of going up and down the feather, they're going to go across the feather a little bit with some darker lines and don't worry too much if you put too many in. Most of the time what I do is I start putting in those texture lines and then at some point I get rid of them. I take them back out. You also notice I went over that white line I had in the middle and I softened the white markings on the other feathers so that they weren't quite so bold because they wouldn't have been. So I'm taking a small brush now and I'm putting in those texture lines. I'm just kind of picking some areas and pulling some lines out from the middle to create that texture. And I'm gonna do that across all of them and then I'll go back with just a wet brush without any paint and I'll soften them up. continue on as I look at the next layer of feathers that kind of comes up above this for the, the longer flight feathers I'm gonna basically do the same thing that I've already done okay I'm going to define the feathers by using the darker value where the shadow of the first feather falls down over it and then I'm going to use a wet brush 
and I'm going to spread that color out over the rest of the feather. But I have to say, as I get farther up into the feathers, I'm usually less detailed. So the flight feathers probably get the most detail, and the tail feathers on a bird. And then the secondary feathers, the ones that come right up above the primary flight feathers, and the back feathers, the neck feathers, most of the time those get a lot less detail for me. They, they just, and it's kind of progressive, like the secondary feathers get you know, a decent amount of detail, and then we get up to the, the back feathers, and it's like just hints of what the texture is. So I'll speed my way through some more of these feathers. It's going to be basically the same process repeated many times over. I'm kind of like, my brain's going, uh, I'm kind of bored with painting the same kind of feathers, and this happens to me a lot. So I go, okay, I think I'll move to a different section of the bird altogether, and I'll work on something else. And so I move up here onto his back, and I start working on these feathers. And you're going to see, as I work on these feathers, there's much... I'm not even trying to make all of the detail that I was on those wing feathers, okay? This is more like I want a hint of feathers. And if you look back at the reference photo, let's see, I'll pull it up here. Here we go. So if you look at that reference photo, you can see that on the top part of the wings and on the back area, there's just, you can't actually see a lot of detail. It's a big jumbled mess of very small feathers. And so what I want is more a hint of texture and less feather definition. I don't need to see every individual feather. Nobody's got that kind of time, okay? I spend a lot of time on a painting, but that would be a bit excessive if I were, like, literally uh, checking out every single teeny tiny feather. So I'm still working with a lot of the same colors that I had before. Um, I didn't mention, but the bottom feathers, I was using neutral tint and sepia. On those secondary feathers, I was mainly using Moon Glow from Daniel Smith and adding a little bit of neutral tint where needed, adding a little bit of sepia if I needed to brown it up. But as I'm working on the back here, I'm still using those same colors. I'm using neutral tint, I'm using sepia, I'm using some Moon Glow, 
And at some point here, I'll add in some burnt sienna because on his neck, he has more of a warm tone. And so the burnt sienna gives it more of a burnt reddish tone. You can see I'm adding in a bunch of these little shapes, just like little uh, half diamonds, little dagger shapes. And so I add those in and then I'm going to come back at some point with just a wet brush, just no paint, just water. And I'm going to kind of smooth all of that out. Okay. I want to keep some of the texture, but I don't want all of it there. And so here I've just, I'm taking water and I'm just blending. Okay. I'm blending out some of what I put in. So again, I want to create the illusion of feathers without the extra extra detail. I went in and got an even bigger brush for blending. So this is basically my process when I'm making less detail. Sometimes I might paint it all one color and then I might come back in to create those little texture lines and then I'll go back in with water and blend out a lot of the little texture lines. It just depends. And if you blend out too many of them, you can always come back in with a brush after it's dry and add in more texture lines. There's nothing stopping you there. I'm thinking, what do I want to work on now? Do I want to keep doing that? Do I want to do something else? Hmm, what do I want to work on now? That's what's going through my brain here. And sometimes I have to go look back at my, my reference photo and go, okay, where are the darker bits? Where are the lighter bits? Because in doing this, I'm actually kind of creating depth. Okay. There's this deeper area in between his wings where it's going down to his back and the wings stick up above that. So I have to create this illusion that it's deeper on that area of the bird. And so well, that is what I'm working on, but I'm going to speed it up again. again and I'm like okay done enough of that for a little while now I'm gonna go work on these feathers over here and here we just kind of have little tips of the feathers sticking out from the body so I'm working on those and there's not a whole lot of gradient in these they're they're kind of just peeking out from the body and so those go by pretty quickly and then we work on some of the tail feathers there and now I'm coming back to this painting I can't remember I think it was the next day after just taking a little bit of a break from this and uh, getting ready to work on this bird some more and I'm going to continue to work on some of these more defined feathers I'm going to follow the same basic pattern of what I've been doing look for the the shadows and then pull some of that darker color over um, so that it's lighter and I'm going to speed up the process of working through these.
you'll notice that some of the feathers I'm working on here are more ragged. They have more ragged edges. And you can see on the right hand side when I was doing the secondary feathers that I left an area that was very ragged edged. And if you looked at the reference photo, you'd see that a lot of the feathers on this pelican are kind of, uh, they have rough edges. They've been abused a little bit. Maybe he needs to molt. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to work on some feathers here where I'm leaving them ragged. And all that, all that means is that when I make the outline of the feather underneath it, I'm going to pull some of that dark color up to make the edges. And um, I'm going to put in some more of those texture lines to create the, the look of that ragged edge. Now at this point, I'm moving around the top of the wing and I'm starting to put in some feathers that kind of come off the side of the wing into that gap. It's like they kind of stick off the side and they go into that area that's deep in between the wings. So I'm putting a little bit of color in there for those. And then I'm going to start to fill in a couple more detailed feathers here. There aren't very many more feathers that have much detail on this bird, but there are a couple right here. And then once we get that, we are going to work quickly on the, on the back of the bird and on the top of the wings. Both of those are considerably less detailed than the rest of the bird.
stuck with me this long. You are a rock star, okay? You are you have the patience for this hobby. <laughs> but I'm filling in the back of the bird now and I need it to be dark in that kind of deep area that's in between the two wings because I need to show that it is deeper and that it's shadowed. So I'm filling in that area. <laughs> And I'm just sort of working along here to fill it in, but I'm leaving the edge ragged because there are feathers that stick down into that area. So I don't want it to be like a hard line. There are very few hard lines in nature. I'm continuing to darken some areas to create a little bit more contrast. And you can see this bird is really starting to take shape here, seeing him much more as we go through here. <clears throat> now, I am taking a smaller brush and I'm starting to fill in the area where there are just very small, cluttered, not organized feathers. Okay, and I'm starting with the lightest color that I want to see in there. I've mixed some burnt sienna and some Van Dyke brown and I'm just keeping it really light. Might have thrown some yellow ochre in there too. And then I'm gonna progressively start adding some darker colors in the areas that I want it to be darker. So uh, this pelican should have brown tones to it. So I'm adding Van Dyke Brown and some sepia. And I'm just continuing to make these general shapes of, of um, feathers. I'm doing the same thing over on the other side. I believe at this point I picked up a liner zero brush because I wanted more long lines. Looking at the feathers on this side, they were kind of like long strips of lines. So I needed to have more paint on my brush and to be able to see those long bits. And also I find a liner brush helps me to kind of randomize my movements a little more. Uh, it just looks more natural. So I'm trying, as I put in these lines, I'm trying to sort of create almost the shapes of feathers, okay? And I'm paying attention to which way the feathers go on the wing at any given point, because they do kind of change direction. If you have them just sort of going straight all the way across, it won't look right. And the feathers near the top of the wing were shorter than the feathers as they got farther down. Now I've got just water on my brush and I am softening that texture. I'm blending out a lot of it and I'm doing that all through the wings. Okay, I just want to get rid of some of that texture. It's too distinct. I do this with a lot of things. I do this with fur. I do this with a number of things on animals and so I'm, I'm just adjusting that now I'm seeing some areas where I was like, that needed to be a little darker to show that it's underneath these other feathers. So I'm darkening it up. It's also because I didn't want to put stuff in back into these wings while they were really wet. Now I've got burnt sienna because I felt like it needed to be warmer. I wanted to see more of that reddish tone in there. So I added some of that and I'm adding some darker colors into to bring in some of that texture again but also to darken it up it's not as dark as i think it needs to be and i'm going to do that on both sides particularly up at the top of the wing there were like lots of little shadows from little feathers that hang down and so i sat and put a bunch of little texture lines in there i'm going to do the same thing on the other side And really then after that, it's just, it's just more of adjusting the te texture, adjusting a few little things. And then this painting is about done. I did actually go back after this video and change a little bit about the left side of the wing. It was uh, not quite the way it needed to be in the final painting. So I changed that a little bit after looking at the reference photo some more. But really that was about it. And I was pretty happy with this.